Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is Desiree Rover from the Netherlands in the minority of one report on ConsciousConsumerNetwork.tv. And I have in my studio tonight a very special person. I have so much respect for his work and for himself because he has overcome the most dire situations. I welcome you, Mr. Jordan Maxwell. Thank you, Desiree. It was always a pleasure to be with you. And thank you for having me on with you. Yes, well, I <laughs> hope that we can have a very interesting conversation about all the things that are going on in the world right now with uh, the caravans in, that go into America and the refugees, so-called refugees that are well, inundating Europe, uh, but those, those things have deep, deep old roots, and it's orchestrated. And I was hoping that you could enlighten us about the history, the deeper reasons of what is happening today. So uh, I would say, take it away, uh, well, Mr. Maxwell, you. dear John. Uh, what I'm thinking is that the best way to to overthrow a government, to overthrow uh, a particular government, is to flood people into the country uh, with no organization whatsoever. This is the way it was done thousands of years ago. The uh, ancient kings <clears throat> in the Middle East, <clears throat> when they would overthrow another government, they would always change the people, they would take the people from one country and put them here and take the people from that country and put them there because it works so much better because the people now are very unsettled. They don't know what to do. They are putting into a new place and they don't know what to do. They don't have any organization. They don't have any way to fight. If you attack them in their own country is one thing. They can fight for their, their country. But if you take the people and move them to another country, they are lost. They don't know what to do. They don't even know what, where, where they are, what they're doing. And that keeps the people afraid and frightened. And also, you can use the army from this country to keep control over this country. Why? Because these people here don't care about the people over here in this country. It's easy for mm -hmm. them to kill them. It's easy for them to, to beat them and to kill them and to mistreat them. But it's very difficult to get the army in this country to do the same thing to their own people. That's different. But if you take the people, the army from this country and move it over there, the army with this with this country doesn't care. They'll they'll do whatever they have to do to keep uh, keep the people under control. So that's what's happening. It's the same old trick. It's been around for thousands of years. And normally you yeah. would think that you would think that if you are sending thousands of people into a country illegally, that is referred to as a uh, as an act of war. You have declared war on another country. And so that's where we are today. The United States is has to be destroyed. It must, it must go. It has to go. Why? Because the very foundation of the United States of America has caused problems all over the world because the people who consider themselves to be royalty, who consider themselves to have a divine right to rule the people, the United States has challenged that divine right. And we, we say, no, the people should be free to do what they want to do. To hell with your divine right. And so, therefore, the, the, the princes and kings and, and all of the royalty are very, very angry with America for what it did back in the 1700s. The kings still today are very angry for what the U.S. did. Because on the world stage, back in 1770s, on the world stage, 
<clears throat> the United States as a small little group challenged the, the power of the king. And the king was going to send over troops to teach this group of, of revolutionaries a lesson. And so when he came over here, they got beat. And so they, the troops had to go home. And so therefore that made the king of England and the royalty of England look very bad in front of all the royalty of Europe. All the royalty mm -hmm. of Europe was saying to the king of England, I thought you were so important. I thought you were so in charge of everything. Now we see you, you send over your troops and nothing happens. They come back and they lost the war. I, you know, what's going on here? If you that, if you that, uh, if you're that bad that you can't even beat a few little colonies, then why should we concern ourselves with you? Why should the king of France and the kings of Spain and all the other kings and royalty be afraid of you? You can't even deal with a small little group over there. So why should we deal with you? You look silly. You, know, you don't even look like royalty. Royalty would never allow this to happen. And so the King of England suffered in front of everyone that he didn't have what it took to overthrow the, the rebellion. And so he never forgot that. Royalty never forgets when you do something to them. They don't forget it because it makes them look mm -hmm. bad in front of the other gang. The rest of the gang is laughing at you. And so that's why... You're never going to have a new world order as long as the biggest guy on the block, which is the United States, does not go along with it. And so they have decided to come back to America, this time not to fight us, this time to open up our banks, open up our institutes, help create our railroads and put money into the country so that, you know, once they put money into the country to build our railroads and to build our, our military and to build up America. But the problem is for us is that when they're putting money into our country to build us up, which they have been doing since the beginning, the King of England has been putting a lot of money into America and the, and the royalty of Europe have been putting money into America. Well, now we got partners. That's different from somebody who's trying to break into your home. We now have partners, and the partners have put a lot of money in America. So they want to own America. They want to own this country. Eventually, once they get the ownership because of law, because of the business, they want to shut us down, pull out the money completely, and have us collapse. And that's what happened during the 1920s when we had the, the stock market failure. The stock market failure uh, was caused by the international bankers of Europe pulling their money out of the stock market. So the whole idea is to overthrow this vast, powerful empire we call the United States of America. And that was accomplished. They, they accomplished overthrowing this country back in 18... 60s with the Civil War. <clears throat> After the Civil War was over, this was not the United States of America any longer officially. Officially, the United States did not exist after the Civil War. We were a lot of things here, but we weren't united. We just got through killing each other. We had a terrible war between each other, so there's not, we're not united. The South was very angry at the North, and the North was angry at the South. And we had wars, bloodshed. So it was not united any longer. So what are you going to do after the war was over? If you don't have a united country anymore, how are you going to feed everybody? How are you going to run the country? I mean, because the people are here, you got to feed them. you got to give them work. you got to do something with them. So what are you going to do? How are you going to take care of this problem because if you don't take care of it it's going to be a bigger war so what they decided to do the the international bankers who had put their money over here what they decided to do was very clever they decided that instead of having united states of america 
they would form a corporation. They would incorporate a company. And it's just mm -hmm. a big company like Ford Motor Company, like General Electric or General Motors. It's just a big corporation, very big corporation, but a corporation nonetheless. And so they call the corporation the United States Incorporated. So it's a company, and therefore United States Corporation have to have a president. You got all corporations have a president. All corporations have a vice president. All corporations have a secretary treasurer. And so it's a company now. We're no longer the United States of America. We're the United States Corporation. And the United States Corporation is only Washington, D.C. Washington, mm -hmm. D.C. is the United States Corporation. And American Samoa, there's a whole list of little islands around the world that the co corporation owns. We own American Samoa. We own the Philippines. We own uh, an island in the Caribbean. We own, there's about four or five little islands groups around the earth that the United States Corporation, Washington, D.C., owns. And so today, if you are living in Washington, D.C., <clears throat> or if you're living on any of those little islands that Washington, D.C. owns, not the states. The states are different. If you're in Washington, D.C., then you are a United States citizen. You're a citizen of the corporation. So today, mm -hmm. today we're all U.S. citizens today. We are not Americans. You have no American affiliation at all. This is not America. Today, the United States is a company, a corporation, and it owns uh, everybody who lives here is an employee of that corporation. And so... And corporations cannot make law. That's the way the world works. A corporation cannot make a law. Ford Motor Company or General Electric cannot make a law that everybody has to ab abide by. No. Mm -hmm. You can make a law for yourself and your, co and your company. If you want to make a particular law for your company, you can. But it doesn't apply to everybody. Because you don't, you're not the government. You're just a corporation. And so, therefore, we don't have a law in America. There is no law. There are only company or corporation policies. You have a policy. You know, Sears or, or big companies have their own policy. The policy is you come to work at a certain time. You go home at a certain time. You park your car at a particular place. You take lunch at a certain time. Those are not laws. They're policies. That's the policy of the corporation. So therefore, <clears throat> in order to have control over the people who work for you, you have to have police. Police enforce the policy. Policy comes from the word police, or police mm -hmm. comes from policy. So you have the police who are the armed, the armed, armed guards. All big corporations have in-house security. So the corporation called United States has an inside security. Police for the people who are the employees, and we have the Army, the Navy, the Marines. They are protecting the corporation on the earth. Because there are other big corporations on the earth that like to buy into our corporation. <clears throat> and so we have a military, standing military, that anybody who wants to bring their corporation here, they abide by the corporation laws here, by the corporation mm -hmm. ideas here. Not You don't come here from, from Europe and come into America and run this company. You don't do that. We have a military to protect the corporation. So we have the military. We have, uh, and of course, if you come across our borders, if you come from our borders, come across into America, you're not coming into America, the, uh, uh, the famous America where people are free and America, mm -hmm. land of the free and home of the brave. We're not free or brave. We're all prisoners. 
But if you come here and you come across the border without documents, we don't care if you come across the border, as long as you're documented, you have to have documents. So that's what we're concerned about with this corporation is that you have to be documented. Why? Because if you come across the border without documents, then we, the corporation here can put a lien on you. A lien in, in law means if I paint your home or I do something for you in your home and you don't pay me, then I can put a lien on your property. I can put a lien on your home, which means in law, you can't do anything with your house unless you pay me because you owe me first. So if you got a chance to sell your home, then you have to get first. I have a lien on you, okay? Mm -hmm. So therefore, if you come across the border with no papers, then you are referred to here as an alien. You're an alien. A lien has been put on you. That's what we can mm -hmm. do. Edward, alien. A lien has been put on you. But why? Because you have no documents. We don't know if you work for our corporation or not. Where's your paperwork to show that we hired you? You don't have any. Well, then you are an alien, and we can now put a lien on you. <clears throat> and the reason why that's important is because when the U.S. was overthrown back in the 1860s, 1870s, actually, 1871 was when this happened. The reason why it's important today is because the corporation needed money because we were broke after the Civil War. Uh, you know, the whole country was broke after the Civil War, and we were just trying to stay alive. So we had to borrow money. The corporation had to borrow money from international banking companies, international banks, to stay alive. Because you got to feed the people, and you got to pay the armies, you got to pay the people and give them an economy. Well, we don't have any money for an economy, so we have to borrow it. And so when we went to the European bankers and asked to borrow money, that's what they wanted us to do. We want you to borrow our money, so we own you. Mm -hmm. because, because our constitutional stand, the way it reads in law, if I am, am concentrating my money on you, I am your partner. That's what it says in the law in America. Anyone who, anyone that the U U.S. government gives money to, they not they're not partners. They own you. So if the government gives you the money that you need, they're not your partner. They own you. You were broke, and we paid you and keep you alive. Therefore, we own you. We own your company. <clears throat> Excuse me. So today, the way it was set up back in the 1870s, that every the, the the banks in Europe asked America, "What do you have for collateral? If we're going to loan you billions of dollars, what do you have that's worth it? In case you don't pay, what do you have for collateral? You don't own anything. Why should we give you billions of dollars if you don't own nothing?" And suppose you don't pay us, what are you going to pay us with? And the U.S. made a deal with the European banker. They said, we will give you our people. We will give you our people to be slaves. So if we can't pay you, you own the people, and they, they will work for you. And so the banker said, okay, if you give us the people, we will give you so much credit for each person you can document. You have to document every person that's in your country. And for each person that's in your country, we will give you, say, maybe $6 million, $5 million, $4 million, $6 million per person. But you have to show us on paper you've got that person. So we need his name, his address, his phone number, because he's our slave. And so that's why we have a census. We have to take a census to find out how many people are here so we can tell our bankers who loaned us the money to stay alive. We have to tell them how many people we have. 
that's why we're not interested. If you want to come across the border, we're not, it, we don't care about that. We care that you're undocumented. We need to have your body documented because that means we get $6 million more from the banks. That's the way it's always been. So every time someone comes in, that's good. We're happy about that. Bring them a lot in, but document them so we can get money off of them. We could go there and say, well, we got 10 million, uh, 10,000 more people or well, 10,000 times 6 million. That's a lot of money. Well, we need a lot of money. And so that's why today you're seeing this destruction of the United States because the people who run this country want that money and they are opening, uh, telling people, come on, come on in and get your documents. And then we can now turn around and go to the banks in, in England and go to the banks in Amsterdam and the big international banks. And, and we can get $6 million for each one of those names. We need the money. We'd like to have the money. Why? Because we got a big army. We got a big, big projects we want to do. We need a lot of money. So, so that is a, why. So that is why at the border they accept these people and give them documents immediately, yeah. passports. That's that's the reason why they do that. Because I was but, wondering, what the heck is that? Yeah, they're giving them documents so that we can document they're here. <clears throat> Why? Because the banks in Europe made a deal with us. Yeah. And the deal is every person you give us as a slave, we will give you credit for $6 million or $5 million. It's, yeah. I don't know what the amount is today. I think it's $6 million per per human, $6 million per human. Uh, I think that's what it is. It may be a little less now. Or maybe it's a little more, but it was right around six million dollars per person, many many years ago. <clears throat> well, that's a lot of money, yes, and it, it come pouring in by the thousands now. So <clears throat> right, and so therefore, today is America is just a company. And yeah. This is why every time. Somebody, every time you, if you come into this country to live here, we could get $6 million off of you. We, we put your name in the bank and they have to give us credit for you. They give us $6 million credit so we can write checks. And that's also where birth certificates come in, right? That's right. Exactly. It's a certificate. Your birth certificate is a bank note. Look at yeah, the, look at right. the yeah. edges of the, of the birth certificate. It's a bank note. And, and that birth certificate means money to the u.s corporation we can get money for you mm -hmm. and so yeah. this is why it's just a business and that makes you and that makes you if you come here we get money off of you you're part of the company now you're part of the corporation mm -hmm. and if you're part of the corporation you are now a corporation yourself. We make you a corporation, and then we sell your corporation to the banks in Europe. So you are a corporation if you come here to live. And as a corporation, you are a company. Mm -hmm. And that's why the, you are a company. And so that's why if I see you come out of a restaurant at, at, at midnight, with a with another with a man that uh, I know, and you come out of the restaurant with him, I tell you the next day I call you and I say, you know, the man you were with last night, yeah, I, I was tell I'm telling you, he's bad company, and you say <laughs> mind your own business, yeah. business company, yeah, and you're going to get married, and he's going to be your partner. Uh huh. We're talking about business partner company. Yeah. We're talking business. That's all. It's just business. Well, happily, it's none of my business. <laughs> what you do is none of my business. But what who I'm out with is none of your business. We're business. We are a company. And so you're out with, a, uh, it's none of my business, but you're out with a bad company. And you say, mind your own business. Why? It's because I am a business. And you're saying, mind your own business. Don't worry about my business. I'm yeah, getting course. married. He's going to be my partner. So that's why mm -hmm. if you're getting married, if you're going to get married, you have to have a license. You can't just get married. Nobody can just, just get married because you want to get married. No, no. 
It's a business. You have to have a business license because you're a company and you're doing business with another company. You've got to have a license uh -huh. to do business. It's called a business license. So if your business, uh, your personal business don't work out, your marriage don't work out because it's your, pro your, it's your business, not my business. But if your business doesn't work out, you're not going to go to God. You're going to court. And you better bring all your money and your property and your car and everything else you own. And you go into court because it's just business. It's just yeah. money. So mm -hmm. the whole life in America is a business. This is why we have the underworld organizations like the mafia. They will tell you, you know, it's just business. We're talking about money. We're talking about business. And this is why when you come across the border, you are an alien, an alien, because we put a business lien on you. So the bottom line on all of this is that today, the whole world is a business. Yeah. Uh, this is why even in the movie, there was a movie made many years ago called Network. Network was a very famous movie some 25, 30 years ago or 40 years ago. It's a very old movie now, but it was a brilliant movie, and it was very truthful, where they said the whole world, all countries in the world are corporations. They're companies, big companies. So when you come over here as, a, as England comes to America, yeah, that's one corporation visiting another. <laughs> and the first thing our corporation is going gonna, is gonna to say is, wait a minute, what are you coming over here for? You want to do business? What do you want to do? Yeah, we want to do business. What, what business do you want? Well, we want the oil from another corporation. It's called Iraq or Iran. They have a lot of oil. We want their oil. So what are you coming to me for? Well, because we might need some help. Just business. We might need some help. You say, oh, okay. Then if we help you, what do we get? Well, you get one half. Oh, okay. All right, so we'll, we'll, we'll get one half of the oil. If we help you overthrow that country, we'll get part of the oil. Uh, yeah. yeah. So now you understand how the world works. It's just business. business. Okay. We don't care about humans. We don't care about yeah. people. All we care about is how much money did we make? How, what do we own? And so when you say that you're a United States citizen, it means that you're an employee of a foreign corporation. It's foreign to the states. It's foreign to the states. If you're living in one of the states in the United States, you're not in Washington, D.C. You're in a state, a different state. And so that's why you have things like Israel is called the state of Israel. And there's a very interesting, uh, lots of interesting stuff you don't you need to know about government. There are there are two different things. There's a state and the state of. You got New York State, or the state of New York. The state of does not mean New York at all. It's a totally different subject. So you have California State. You have. Uh, New York State, you have Florida State, those mm -hmm. are the states. But if you have something called the state of New York, that's different. That doesn't mean New York at all. That's a different word. The state of New York is not New York State. State of New York is the federal corporation, United States corporation operating inside the state of New York. Yeah. Because the corporation's operating inside each state. And so the, uh, the corporation is called the state of. So in California, you have California State. We have universities. Organization called California State University. That's California. That's California. But the state of California, that's the federal government operating in California. Yeah, and yeah. so there's a big difference. Yeah. How the world really works is very simple the whole earth is a business yeah it's big corporations fighting other big corporations to make more money and to be more in control you get the big companies and they want to take over 
a small company and now they got that company under them they own that company and then they, they now they're getting bigger they're making more money now they want to take over this corporation well once in a while a big corporation wants to take over germany which is a big corporation and they have business all over the world too well if we decide we want to take them over we want that company working for us we call it a world war it's a major war going on because it's what is called a hostile takeover. Yeah. We're taking over your country, whether you like it or not. Why? Because we want the money. You're doing business, and if we own your country, we own your business. So we will own you. We'll tell you what you can do and what you can't do. So the bottom line is that life on the earth today has nothing to do with why, what women or children or grandmothers or people to help, help people to, to take care of families. That's not what the earth is about. Today, the world is a business. We're talking about control and money, period. That's why banks are so important. Why do you have a bank? That's where you put your money, as in a bank. Well, where, where, why do you have a bank? Because the banks are on both sides of a river. They're called river banks. And mm -hmm. what does a river bank do? It directs the flow of the currency. Because it directs the flow of the current. And your money is called currency. Why is it currency? Because it's a current. It, comes, it goes out and it comes back in. And it goes out and it comes back in. It's a current. And it's a liquid asset. It's water. It's like a liquid asset. It flows in, yeah, but it flows out right back out again. And so it's a currency. And so business is water. There are two kinds of law on the earth. The Roman Empire said yeah. this many thousands of years ago. Rome said that there are two kinds of law on the earth. There's, if you look at the globe of the earth, there's only two things you will see, water and land. Yeah. So there's two kinds of law, a law that, co that governs the land and a law that governs the water. So you have two kinds of, of laws. One's called the law of the land and the law of the sea. Yeah. And this is why the, the law of the sea is banking law. Because the law of the land is the law of the people who live on the land. And that's why in every country of the world is different. You, 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 know, you can't do things in South Africa that you can do in Russia. You can't mm -hmm. do things in Russia that you can do here in America. Everybody is different. So you have to call the law of the land. If you're going to live in a particular country, you better learn what their laws are and how they live. The customs of the people is the law of the land. Yeah. But there is something bigger that runs the world. It's money. It's called the law of the sea. The law of water. And why? Because we say things like, your, you know, money goes through your hands like water. You spend yeah. money like, like it's just water. Money goes through your hands like water. No. No. Money is water. It's a liquid asset, a cash flow. <laughs> and, and put it into the bank. Yeah. It's all in the language, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's all language. But why? Why is money the liquid asset? Because it's based on your body. And your when you were born, you came out of your mother's water. How water broke. And mm -hmm. you came out into the world as a product. Now you're going to make money. You're going to do things that make money. And therefore, if we own your mother, which we do, you know, the government owns your mother and it owns your father, and they were just doing business, and you were the product of their business, therefore they had a license to do business. From who? Who gave them the license? The government gave them the license. So if the government gave you a license to do something, the government's in charge of you because they're the ones that gave you a license. Yeah. You know, and so therefore the government owns your mother. And so when your mother gave birth to you, <clears throat> they now own you because your mother had a license from the government 
to do business with your father. Therefore, they own you. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> because they're it's the ones so that gave weird. you a license. Yeah. Yeah. And so the whole thing is the idea is that money, banking, money is based on water. Maritime mm -hmm. Admiralty Law, the law of the sea, is the law of banks and money. Because when a ship pulls into port, when a ship pulls into port where it parks, it's called a berth, B-E-R-T-H. A ship sits in her berth. And every single item, that, say, for instance, is all TVs from Japan or all automobiles from another country. <clears throat> when the ship pulls in, it parks at the dock. And where it parks is called its berth. And every item on that ship has to have a certificate of manifest. It has to have a piece of paper showing how much does the car weigh, what color was it, how many doors did it have, is it air conditioned or not. Every car has to have a certificate because it's sitting in the berth. She, all ships are female by law. You always hear captains. You always hear a captain say, oh, yeah, she's a good ship, and she's done this, and she she's does that, and, and, and we love this ship because she has done this and she's done that. Why are all ships, airships, rocket ships, sailing ships, doesn't matter. If it's a ship, it's she. Why? Because she carries the product. Mm -hmm. Without her, there is no product. When she gives birth in her birth, you have to have a certificate. It's called a birth certificate. And the birth certificate, it shows what she brought into the world. She brought you in. Yeah, but, but the ship, she brought $800 million worth of Toyotas into our world. So we have to have a birth certificate. And it's yeah. got to be signed by the dock because that's where the ship is sitting. It's sitting at the dock. So the dock has to sign your birth certificate. <clears throat> it's a business. It's the way business works. I and know. so, yeah. Once you, but once you understand that life on this earth is two things, it's one thing for you privately in your home, in your life is one thing. That's life on the earth. Life on the earth is for me, my home, and my people, and my, my, my family. But that's not the way the people who run this world, they don't look at it as privately. They don't care about your family. They care about one thing, money and control of people, period. Yeah. And they have their own ideas about how the, go, how the business is going to go, and it hasn't got nothing to do with you. If yeah. you get in the way, then you're an employee that's getting in the way of the corporation making money. They'll throw you in jail. They'll mm -hmm. throw you in prison if you get in their way of making money. Well, that's the same thing the mafia does. You yeah. know, the underworld organization will kill you if you get in the way of, of them making the money. So if you think you're going to change the business, you better go back and do some homework. You ain't changing nothing. It's a big world that we live in, and it's a big business. And that's what, that is what happens to all the doctors who work with patients in a different way healing them from cancer and that was not the idea of the big that's corporation, the, the corporation so they had to go that's right the yeah. reason why is because the more people you have on cancer the more medical pills you're going to sell exactly yeah and you're going and that people are going to have to go to the doctor and that costs a lot of money to go to the doctor and to go in the hospital and have the operations and all that costs money. And yeah. the doctors aren't making it, the hospitals aren't making it, the government's making the money. Why? Because the government gives the doctor the per the permit to be a doctor. Uh -huh. that's, why he has to, that's why he has to get the permit. Yeah. Uh, and so bottom line is I don't care what you talk about, in this world it's a business. <laughs> yeah. I have been I have been calling Western patent medicine uh, a slow kill business model. Yeah, but I have seen it is like that for ages. It's just business. It's absolutely just a business. Yeah, 
Yeah, yeah, yeah, yeah. It has nothing to do with empathy or healing or whatever. <laughs> no, it's a business. Yeah. And, and treat that's why you see, that you see the royalty. You see the queen mum riding on the on the gold chariot. <laughs> yeah. 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 What's that all about? What's that about? The kings and queens. Yeah. Riding in gold chariots. Yeah, they well, show their money. If you're the if you're the corporate head of a corporation called the United Kingdom, yep, they're doing business all over the world. They own property. They're doing business. They're buying and selling high rises and insurance companies. They're making lots of money around the world. Well, if you're the head of the corporation, you make a lot of money. Yeah. This way, you know, you just have to be careful about what you're doing with business. Because when you're doing business with Germany, you better watch out. <laughs> if you're doing business with Russia, you can do business with Russia, but you better be careful because they're not stupid either. And they may do business with you and do something that uh, you'll, you'll go broke you mm -hmm. know, with them or you'll end up in a war with them. So you better be careful when you're doing business with other big corporations, other big companies. The whole world is a business. There's nothing personal about it at all. No. So in your in your world, in your world is consumed with your husband, your children, your family. That's your world. But the world and 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 at the United Nations, they don't care about you. They no. don't care about your children. They don't care about you at all. It's just a business. They will have, they will finance a war to have another company, uh, another corporation come in and kill you and your children in your home. They'll finance them to to go and overthrow your country and overthrow you. Yeah, or they have a different method. They vaccinate your children so they have a lifelong patient. Of course, and we'll make money from that patient uh, until, yeah, right. Yeah, well, I've seen that very clearly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If you get one million people with cancer, and each one is paying five thousand dollars a year for pills and operations, yeah, and everything, bingo. What's, what is uh one million times five thousand? That's a lot of money. <laughs> yeah, and yeah, their yeah. bodies and their bodies are worth six million dollars too. Mm hmm. So, you know, you, you want to keep them well. That's why in America, I don't know how it is in Europe, but in America, if you're going to drive a car, you have to have a seat belt and insurance. Yes, we if do. The police, if, they, if they stop you and you don't have insurance and a seat belt, they'll take your car and put you in jail. Yep. Because you have to have a seat belt and insurance. Why? Because you are a, an employee of a corporation, and the corporation is making six million dollars off of you. Yeah. So that's what the corporation wants to hear: that they're making money off of you. But if you get in a wreck, if you get in an accident, and you're in the hospital, now the corporation is not making money off of you. They yeah. got to pay to get you better. They got to pay the. They got to give you insurance. They have to pay for. It. Mm -hmm. you know, your your time in the hospital. So the corporation is losing money on yeah. you because you got in an accident. So they want to make sure you, if you get in an accident, you're safe with them, you know, yeah. protecting their property. Or when you have had the accident and you are in the hospital, then they try still make money off of you by organ donation. That yeah, but they, in a but totally they different light also right now. <laughs> Yeah, but the thing is, they don't yeah. want to even fool with you at all. They don't want to fool with putting you in the hospital. They'd mm -hmm. rather say, go die. You go die if you want. They don't mm -hmm. want to put you in a hospital. It costs money. Yeah. And they're going to lose money. And and so that's why they want you to have insurance. So mm -hmm. that if you're in the in if you're in the hospital <laughs> and you're sick and it's costing hundreds of thousands of dollars and, you know, to keep you alive, the company called United States can get money from the insurance companies. We have an insurance on her. You know, if you get insurance, they, well, the insurance is owned by the government. So yeah. therefore, you have to pay the insurance company to insure you. Yeah. And that's why in, in any big city in America, any big city, uh, probably any big city in Europe too, 
wherever you go, you see the big, big beautiful high rises, big, huge high rise mm. buildings. They're okay. either insurance companies or banks. Or lawyers. Period. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why? Because they run the country. It's called money. <laughs> either you got it or you don't. And so yeah. that's why we have something called maritime admiralty law. It's because you mm -hmm. came out of your mother's water. Yes. Her water yeah. broke. You came out to make money. You came out to live in the world and make money and be important so that the government can make taxes off of you. They can make money off of you. Yeah. yeah, yeah very yeah. strange world that we live in. Very, we very are. Yeah. What well, about the bankers? Um, banksters, I call them. Yeah. Uh, are we talking Rothschild? Say it again. Are we talking Rothschild? Oh, yeah, of course. Of course, they're yeah. one of the biggest ones in Europe. Yeah. They're financing so many big organizations and big governments. But today, they don't have to finance the big governments anymore. They did that many, many years ago. Many they already owned them. Ago. Yeah. Today, they just own the big governments. They exactly. control them. Mm. Why? Because they had the money the hundreds of years ago. And you and just because you borrowed millions of dollars from them hundreds of years ago, that doesn't mean you don't owe it still. You still owe the money. It doesn't matter if the if the loan is a hundred years old and 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 England borrowed the money from the Rothschilds two hundred years ago. It doesn't matter. You no. borrowed the money and you still owe it. And that's why this is why in America we say we have a national debt. Uh -huh. And we have to collect taxes to pay our national debt. Nobody in America has ever asked the question, who do you owe the debt to? Yeah. I thought we were so wealthy. Who do we owe a debt to? It's a national debt. You owe the debt to the bankers that we sold you to a long time ago, back in 1870. In the 1870s, we sold you to the bankers of Europe as collateral for the for the money we needed back in 1870. And so you still owe the banks. Your body is worth millions of dollars, and we have a national debt that we borrowed money. We didn't, they didn't just give us the money. They loaned it to us as a loan, so we have to pay them back so much every year. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's why if they had given us the money, we wouldn't have a national debt. But banks don't give you anything. They loan it. No, no, no. No, yeah. no they don't. And so what was the other point I was going to make about um, uh, the financing? Oh, <clears throat> banks. You know, I, I told you where the word bank comes from. It goes back to the idea of a river bank the yeah. flow of water, yeah. the flow of currency. And so why do you go to court? Why do we have to go to court? And, and the courts are very big all over the world. Everybody goes to court. Why? Because you play basketball on a court. You play tennis on a court. How do you play tennis on a court? You play it with a racket. <laughs> It's because the court is a racket. You're playing it with a racket, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's called racketeering. It's a racket. Because all you're doing when you go to court is to bring your money because you're going to have to pay. Mm -hmm. Whatever it is, if you're going to court, you better bring your checkbook with you because you're going to have to pay something. Yeah. Because the courts are banking. The banks, they operate for the bank. Mm-hmm. And so, therefore, today, if you are ordered to go to court and you don't show up, you don't go, they will put out something called a bench warrant, a bench warrant for you because you didn't come to court when you were supposed to. They put out a warrant for your arrest. And in America, it's called a bench warrant. They will come out and arrest you for not coming to court when you were told to. It's called a bench warrant. Why? Because the word bench is a bank in the Middle East. Under the Roman Empire, all banks were called benches. Why is it a bench warrant? Because the bank wanted you. 
They were going to make money off of you, but you didn't show up. So they lost money on you. So the bank put out a warrant for your arrest. Bring him in here. We need his money. You know, we were going to charge him $500 fine a ticket and you have to pay it. Why money goes to the bank is money. Money goes to the bank. It don't go to the court. The court is paid by the bank, but all money is going into a court goes to the bank. And so the bank was expecting to make 500 bucks off of you. Now you didn't show up. So they put out a bench warrant. And therefore in Latin, a, a bank is called a bench. A bench is a bank in the ancient world, in the Middle Eastern world of ancient of ancient countries in the Middle East, and in Egypt, it comes from the it comes from Egypt and the ancient world. Banks were called benches. Why is because when you go into Egypt, which I've done many times, when you go into Egypt, you go down the street and you'll see all the uh, the business owners are sitting on pillows on the sidewalk. And they have a little bench in front of them with their things that they're selling. And oh. so when you stop that, you want to you pick up something, you want to buy it. If it's fruit or if it's a whatever it is that they're selling, it's on a bench. And so you have to put the money on the bench and the, and the people will take the money and give you your change. It's on the bench. Mm -hmm. So a bench was a bank. In ancient in the ancient world, a bench was the bank. They do business on the bank on the bench. And so that's why today a bench is a bank. It's incredible the way business works in the history of business and how you, you yourself in America are a corporation. You are a business, but happily what you are and what you do is none of my business. <laughs> and who I am and what I do as a company, uh, you know, I don't want your company or, you know, your life is none of my business, business, company, partners. It all has to do with the fact that we human beings are commodities. We are being born and raised to be bought and sold. That's all it is. We are cattle. And the word that's used in America for humans is called chattel, C-H-A-T-T. -T. Yeah. Chattel, not cattle. Cattle are bulls and, and, and cows, etc. We call them cattle. But human beings like us are chattel. Look up the word in the dictionary, yeah. chattel. Mm -hmm. Chattel means you are an animal. This is why, according to royal the, the law of royalty of Europe, the, the law that royalty in Europe have set up says this. This is royal law. It says if you are a man or woman on paper, if you're writing down something on a paper and, and signing something as a man or a woman, if you're a man, it's called masculine. If you're a woman, it's called feminine. But if you are an animal, and you're male, you're an animal, but male. You're not a, a, a man or a woman. If you're an animal, you are a male and female. Mm -hmm. And so there, there's a book that every government, I think every government in the world has. I know that in America and England, there's a booklet put out by the government. It's called the Styles Magazine, the Styles Book. Styles Book. And you can order it from the government. The mm. book called Styles means when you get this book, it shows you all the words that are used in a court in law, all mm. the words that are used in corporations in law that a lawyer has to learn what those words are and what they mean. Uh, these are the official words that are used in a federal court. Mm -hmm. So when you go to court, you need to have a lawyer talk for you because yeah. you haven't read the Styles magazine. So when you use a word, if you standing there and the judge asks you something, you better let your a lawyer, your attorney speak for you. 
<clears throat> Why? Because you don't know what that word means. No. The judge asks you if you are male or female or this, you know, and sometimes when the police will stop you, they ask you for your identification. You give them your ID, your identification, your driver's license, and they say, oh, is this you? Well, if you can see the picture and you're seeing me, obviously it's me. No, they didn't ask you that. They weren't asking you if the two of you are the same, the picture and you. They ask you, is this you? Why? Because this is not you. No. This, is, this is a picture of you, but it's not you. Why? Because the name on it is in all capital letters. Yeah. All capital letters, names, means as a company, as a corporation. All corporations have their company in all capital letters. And so, therefore, when the cop is looking at your driver's license, <clears throat> he asks you, are you agreeing that this name in all capital letters represents you? Yeah. Are you agreeing to that? You say, yes, this is me. Good. That's what I wanted to know. Yeah, I now, now, I have control over you. I'm a police yeah. officer. An yeah. officer. It means I work in an office. I work in an office for corporations called the police department. <laughs> oh, gosh. Yes. It's... it's such an incredible, unbelievable, deep and dark secrets to the way the world really works. And yeah. this is why they're going. Uh, there's so many things I like to tell you, but I can't remember them all at one time. There's so many things you need to know about the world we live in, how the world really works. Yeah. All of this, all of the world that you live in today is based on ancient religions. Today, our world is run by ancient churches, ancient religions. It goes back into the ancient world, <clears throat> and you can trace the ideas that are in your government where you live to ancient religions of your people, of, of your country, the ancient religions, because the priests in the ancient world not only represented the church, it represented God. And so mm -hmm. today we have the Holy Father in Rome. Yeah. The Pope is called the Holy Father. Father. Why? Because he is connecting you to God. So he is the God Father. Mm -hmm. Does that does that make any sense? That's yeah, it the, does. The great Godfather. Mm -hmm. If you see the movie Godfather, that's who the Pope is. He's the Godfather. Yeah, he runs yeah. the whole operation. Exactly. He, he, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he is the, in, in a world of criminals, he is the master criminal. Absolutely. Yeah. All yeah. the criminals have to bow down to him and come kiss his ring and ask him for favors yeah. and kiss his hand, ask him for a favor if you would do this for me I'll kiss your ring yeah that's why all over the world yeah. all the important people of the world the, the royalty a royalty also yeah all the big heads of state they all go to Rome to kiss the uh, bow on their knees and kiss the ring of the Holy Father who talks to God. He's the Godfather. Yeah. And, and this is why today all of this is based on the ancient Roman religion. America is today the ancient Roman Empire come back to life. We are the Roman Empire. And the yeah. reason why is because of all of our operations. Everything we do in America is based on Rome. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's based on the underworld. <laughs> The, the mafia, organized crime. Yeah. This is America. That's what America is. We are the ancient Roman Empire. Mm -hmm. And if you go back at the history books and read about the ancient Roman Empire, mm -hmm. where did Caesar, where was the seat of power for the for Caesars of Rome? Where did they rule the empire from? They ruled it from Rome. Yeah. Well, how many people know that Washington, D.C. was called Washington, D.C., the District of Columbia, when the property was given to George Washington by the District of Columbia? 
the District of Columbia gave the property to George Washington. So it became known as Washington District of Columbia, Washington, D.C. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's very interesting the way that we operate today in America because the history books say, the history books will tell you, Caesar ruled Rome from Capitoline Hill. Yes, Capitol Hill, yeah. Yeah. Capitol Hill. Well, that's what we have in America. We have Capitol Hill. Yeah. And we have these goofballs in, in today in America who become president. They think they're God. They go, they're the Godfather. Mm -hmm. They're Caesar. They're Augustus Tiberius Caesar, emperor of the world. They're not emperor of the world. They're just a bunch of criminals. That's all mm -hmm. they've ever been, is a bunch of criminals. Yeah. And so... Caesar controlled the Roman Empire from Capitol Hill. And he, how did he control the world in Rome? Because he was the head of the Senate. The Senate was up on the hill. It was called the Roman Senate. So we today have a Senate up on the hill. Mm -hmm. And the Capitol building, if you see our Capitol building in Washington, D.C., is yeah. based on the Vatican. It's exactly designed like the Vatican. Hmm. The Vatican Dome and the yeah. Vatican. All of it, just like the Vatican. That's our Vatican. That's where Caesar, Augustus Caesar, Tiberius, the emperor of the world, oh, wow. runs the whole corporation all around the world from the Capitol Hill with the Senate. And so it's just an incredible story about how Rome and the religion and government and banks, the whole world, how it really works. It's just an extraordinary story that most people don't know anything about. No. And that's why you don't have any knowledge about how the world works and you don't know how to protect yourself. You don't know what to say if you're stopped by the police, if you're in the court. And the judge says something to you. You need to keep quiet and let your attorney speak <clears throat> because he knows how this game is played. Yeah. He knows the game. You don't know the game. So you better let him talk for you. And you yeah. have to pay him to talk for you to keep you out of jail because <laughs> he knows what to say and what not to say and how to say it because he knows how the court works. It's a, it's a corporation. And so if yeah. you owe a million dollars, in America, I don't know how it works around the world, but in this country, in the UN and the U.S. corporation, all law is in commerce. Mm -hmm. People do not realize that all law is in commerce. It's the business of government. Mm -hmm. It's the government business. So therefore, if you break the law, like Moses, Moses came down from the mountain and saw the Hebrews uh, worshiping the golden calf, and he threw down the law, and he broke the, the tablets, right? You remember mm -hmm. that? Well, he yeah. was the first lawbreaker. He broke the law. And so today, we are considered to be lawbreakers because you broke the law. And if you break the law, <clears throat> then you got to, I don't know how it is in other countries, <clears throat> but in America, <clears throat> Excuse me. In America, if you do anything which is a breaking the law, if you hurt someone or you shoot and kill somebody, you can pay money for that law and you don't have to go to jail. You can pay money and to the court. You ask the court, how much does it cost to pay my debt to society? I have to pay for what I did because you're going to pay for what you did. Pay, mm -hmm. yeah, it means your money. You're going to pay money for what you did. And if you did something small, like had an automobile accident and you were guilty, then you're going to pay money for, for doing what you did. Or if you shot and killed somebody on the street, you're going to pay money. And so you ask the court, how much does it cost? Yeah. Well, to shoot someone, he's worth $6 million, so a $6 million debt, you have to pay for him, because his body was worth six million dollars, up four million. Well, the government will check and see how much his body was worth to the banks of Europe. And since you took him out of the picture, now the banks in Europe just lost that money. 
because mm -hmm. uh, they owned him. Now, when you killed him, you took him out of the bank. <laughs> and now you got to put that money back. So that's why it's just based on business. So if you kill someone, you have taken that money from the bankers of Europe. You have to give them back that money that they had given the government for him. So that's called paying your debt to society. You're paying your debt to the country you uh, you live in. So if you if you're very wealthy, you can shoot and kill somebody and pay for it. Not you have to go to jail. You yeah. go to jail for committing a crime. The reason why you go to jail is because your body, your body is considered to be a battery, like a battery in the in, the, in your flashlight or in your mm -hmm. radio. Your yeah. body is a battery. It's a biological electrical unit. You are a biological electrical unit. That's how your hands and arms can move. That's how you move your muscles is because it's electrical. You are a biological battery. And the batteries have energy. So if you run out of energy, you say, well, I'm dead tired. I'm just dead. I don't have any energy to do nothing. Why? Because you have run out of energy. Energy is life. And so your body is a, you need to have some sleep so you can rest and build up energy. Your body is giving you energy. You're yeah. saving up the energy so when you wake up, you feel like you've got energy now. Now you can do something. Why? Because you're just a battery. And that's why if you're a battery and you go into court and, they, and you owe money, you can't pay it, then they're going to put you in a cell. It's called a jail cell. No, the battery is called a cell. And so they put your battery inside the cell. And they and now they can sell you. S-E-L-L. -L. They can sell. <laughs> yeah. 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 They can sell you and make money off of you. So if you go to prison, corporations can buy you. They can yeah. they can buy your 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 uh birth certificate they can buy your certificate uh, your paperwork and so the court can sell your body which is worth six million dollars they'll sell it to some big corporation in europe they give it to them sell it to them and so the corporation in europe can buy your body if it's in america they can buy you and now they give the money to the government and the government just sold you off because you were just a security most people don't know that in America, you, if you are a human, a man or a woman or a child, your body is a security on the New York Stock Exchange. Yeah. This is mm -hmm. why if you if you've got a son and he's getting married to a girl who's very wealthy, or if you have a daughter and she's getting married to a young man who's extremely wealthy, we say, well, he's of good stock or she's of good stock. <laughs> yeah, so I, I say, what is she marrying a cow? <laughs> is he, uh, is he stock? Well, no, he is stock. He's on the stock market. Yeah, this is what, if you have a house, you have a backyard. It's called a stockyard. Just where your stock is is growing up is <laughs> a stockyard. It's called your backyard, and so you are a stock. You know, you are an animal that's being bought and sold. You're not feminine or masculine on your identification. It says male or female. According to the law, male and female is an animal. Yeah. But masculine and feminine is, is, a, is a man or a woman. Therefore, in courts and in law, you are not a woman. You are a female animal. Only royalty can use the term uh, masculine and feminine. Only royalty are considered to be men and women. The mm. queen is a woman. Why? Because she is feminine. According to her identification, the queen mother is feminine. And mm. the king of England, he is a male. He's called masculine. That's his identification. Not male. He's not male. You uh -huh. are, are male, not him. You are female. And she mm. is, is feminine. Why? Because feminine and masculine means man or woman. And nobody on the earth is a man or woman. They're all animals. 
except the people who run the country, except the people who run the world. They run this corporation. They run the way the world works. They, they, they put it together. So they said male and female as animals, masculine and feminine as us. We are the masculine and feminine. Yeah. We are men and women. Therefore, if you say you have a right, you men have a right and the women have a right, yeah, female, feminine has a right. That's true. The queen has a right, not you. You're just an animal. You have no rights. No. You're just like an animal, a, a female dog. <clears throat> You're like a female animal. So what rights do an animal have? None. I don't have any rights. I'm not gonna, the dog is not going to take you to court. You don't have any. He doesn't have any rights. <clears throat> so if you are a male or female, you have... <clears throat> All I'm saying is that the entire world is a business. Yeah. And it's in every expression. It's hidden in plain sight, really. And That's you don't right. see it until we have this conversation. <laughs> so. Yep. And so my interest is in theology and religion. I'm fascinated with something I call religion and theology. It's, it's very, very, uh, very interesting. I have another radio show I have to do pretty soon. So how much longer are we on the show? Uh, as long as you are able or want to be on the show. Uh, I mean, I had two hours, but if you want to finish early, that's okay with me. Oh, okay. Okay. Well, I think maybe I... I should go pretty soon. I'm going to get a phone call from another show that I'm doing. Okay. I do sometimes two and three radio shows a day. Yeah. Every day. <clears throat> But um, if well, you go on my website, go on my website. Yes. Mention your websites, please. Yeah. Yeah. Jordan Maxwell. Jordan like the river. J-O-R-D-A-N. Jordan like the Jordan River. Maxwell, M-A-X-W-E-L-L, -L. Jordan Maxwell Show is my website. Remember that. If you want to find out anything from me, <clears throat> it's not Jordan Maxwell. It's Jordan Maxwell Show is my website. The reason I say that is because there are other websites out there with my name on it, Jordan Maxwell name on the website, but they're not mine. Other people are using my name to make money off of me because lots of people want to talk with me and want to <clears throat> do business and buy my videos, etc. <clears throat> well, I don't sell anything. And so other companies have come in and take my name and they sell my products. I don't get anything from them. <clears throat> yeah. So I'm showing your website right now. Yeah. To the people. So jordanmaxwellshow.com. Right. That's it. Now, beneath Clear. my picture, you will see in the purple color, it says Jordan Maxwell Research Society website. Yeah. Yes, I'm lighting it up. On, yeah, if you click on that, that takes you to my second website. I have two websites. It takes you yes. to my second website. Yeah. Call the Jordan Maxwell Research website. And you have to Society, join the yes. at the top yeah. it says uh, log in or join. See, before it says welcome, join, yeah, or log in. You have to join this website. Yeah. And when you join this website, it's a research website. It's got all the pictures, documents, all the research papers, all the words, the terms, the audio lectures all kinds of research on all kinds of subjects <clears throat> that if you want to do the research that I do and want to learn better what I'm talking about, go and join my research society. It's amazing. Yeah. It's a research website. It's got everything on there I'm talking about, all the pictures and the documents. You can read all about the things I'm talking about and see it with your own eyes. So that's the second website I have. It's called the Jordan Maxwell Research Society website. 
Yeah, it's it's called exactly uh, Jordan Maxwell Research dot is. Yeah, the is 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 not Israel. No. I, it's is is for Iceland. Iceland, yes. <laughs> yeah. I had to put my website in Iceland because I have so many criminals that want to steal my work and steal my name and steal my website and yeah. steal everything I have and, and, and try and destroy my name and destroy my reputation and just, just, just to destroy everything I've worked for to do. I have many enemies that do not like what I do, telling people about the criminality of the world we live in. So I have to protect my website, and it costs me a lot of money to protect it. I have to have security companies securing my website. I have to have all kinds of, of security companies on my website to protect my website for me. And so I put it in Iceland, because Iceland is, is a very safe place to have your website. You can't steal from Iceland very easy. It doesn't work that way. Iceland is too big of a project. If you're going to steal anything, you better try stealing from somewhere else, not Iceland. So that <laughs> I put my put my website in Iceland. It costs more money. It costs a lot more money to put it in Iceland. But at least I know I can sleep knowing that my website is being protected with security. Yeah. So. Yeah, you, you become a I, member of that research site, isn't that so? You you pay a certain amount of money and you become a member and then you are free to roam around in everything yeah. that you... Yeah, receive. it's only a one-time one yeah. donation. Yeah, yeah. Just a one-time donation for life. It's a life... Yeah. Uh, lifelong donation, just one time, and then you you buy into the website, and now you can keep it. You just go through the whole yeah. thing, and you can save all the pictures in your own computer. You can save the documents. You can save everything. All of my mm -hmm. work is going to be there. I got a lot more work to put on my web website. It's, it's fairly new. It's only been around for a couple of years. Yeah, I know. Well, I've but got thousands of, of things to put on that website but my webmaster is only one man he's only one person yeah. and he can only do so much <clears throat> in a day yeah. and so he is very very good at, at being a webmaster he knows what he's doing he's very good but it takes him time to do things on my website that really do it right so there's no yeah. problems whatsoever yeah, yeah. So uh, I have to pay him. That's why I charge uh, a donation yes. to join my website, so I can pay him and pay for my website and pay for everything else. That I, you know, I, I'm almost eighty years old. I, I don't have any income. That's mm -hmm. the only way I can have an income to pay. I have is if people want to join my research website because I've spent all of my time and money all of my life on doing the research. I, I know. Doing stuff for years. I started back in 1959, <laughs> which is actually today is 59 years. Next year in, 19, in 2019 will be 60 years. 60 years I've been in research. I do. Yeah, and it's taken me 60 years to figure all of this stuff out, how it works and who does what and how and what the words mean and what the symbols mean. Yeah. <clears throat> well, you have done a fabulous job and the offer to have one donation for life to roam around your website is very, very, very generous of you. And I hope that people give you big donations because you really deserve that. Uh... Well, thank you. I appreciate it. I, you know, like I said, the only reason why I'm I have to charge is because I have to pay everybody to keep the website alive. Yeah. I have to pay for my website to start with Jordan Maxwell Show. Yeah. Dot com. Then I have to pay for another website, Jordan Maxwell Research Society. There's two websites. And therefore, I have to have a, a, a webmaster who takes care of both websites. I got to yeah. pay him. I have to pay him. 
Mm-hmm. And then I got all kinds of insurance companies and security companies on my website. So that protects the website. If you're doing business and selling anything, it's all protected. So, but that costs money to get protection to do business on your website. So that's why I charge a bit of a donation one time. No, but that's totally okay because your work it really is priceless, Jordan. Well, I think that knowledge is power. Absolutely. Why yeah. people cannot do anything. America, in America, we can't do anything. Why? We don't have the power to do anything. Mm-hmm. Why? Is because knowledge is power. Yes. Without knowledge, you don't know what to do. So no. I spent my whole life researching the society in which I live, how it works, what is what, what we're doing and how we live and how what we doing when you <clears throat> it just took all my, my whole life to research how the world works and today people don't know that in america you cannot pay a bill we say that in america that we say well we have to pay this bill we have to pay that bill no you cannot pay a bill you can discharge a debt you cannot pay a bill. You can't pay anything in America. You can only discharge the debt. Let me show you how. Suppose you were a painting contractor and I call you and I say, I want you to paint my office. And you come over and you see the job to come over and you give me uh, you give me an estimate. And you say, I'll paint your office for a hundred dollars. <clears throat> and I agree. I'm telling you the way business works in America. Okay, so you are going to do a job for me for a hundred dollars. When you're through with that job, you come to me and you give me a bill. You hand me a bill for a hundred dollars. Okay, so I owe you a hundred dollars. You give me the bill. So I reach in my pocket and I pull out a hundred dollar bill and I give it to you. And so I now have paid you. No, I didn't pay you anything. I gave you a $100 bill. It's a bill for $100. You owe me $100. It's a bill. You look at the bill, and it's a bank note. It's from a bank. And it says the owner of this, uh, this is a bill. So when I give, if you had given me a bill for $20, I give you a $20 bill. You give me a bill for five bucks, I give you a $5 bill. A bill is a bill. So when I give you a $100 bill, that's what we call it, a $100 bill or a $10 bill, it's a bill to you. You owe me $10. Why? Because you said I owe you $10, you gave me a bill. That's okay, I'll give you a bill. So now you owe me $10. So since you owe me 10 and I owe you 10, we're even. All you got to do is keep a record. You keep a record. Uh, How many times did you say to somebody, owe you money, and how many times did they give you that money, and now you owe them? Therefore, you have a bill, and you have not been paid anything. I discharged the debt. That's like when you walk across a carpet, and then you touch something as metal. And it, and it shocks you. It's a discharge. You discharge. So that's why you not you don't pay a bill in America. You can only discharge a debt by giving the bill back to the other person. Mm-hmm. This is why in America you don't own anything. If you go in to buy a new car and you pay the yeah. cash, you write the check out and pay cash for the new car. You buy it for fifty thousand dollars, whatever it is, you buy it in cash, and you hand them the check, and they give you the keys, and you bought the car. Yes, you bought the car, but you don't own it. No, you don't own nothing. Why? Because you just gave them, you gave them what they gave you. They gave you a bill for fifty thousand. You give them a bill for fifty thousand. It's called a fifty thousand dollar bill. Yeah. And so, or you sign the you sign the check, so you didn't pay them anything. No, you just gave you discharged the debt. 
but you didn't pay for it. No, you only pay when you have gold coins. That's right. You only pay when you have gold coins. Yeah. Gold right. coins by, by American Constitution says gold and silver coin is money. Yeah. Paper is not money. Paper represents money, but it's yeah. not so, money. If, yeah. And so, yeah. therefore, if you give somebody the paper, you didn't pay for it. You just, it's a promissory note. It's just a note. Yeah, I don't want to forget. I owe you money, so I give you a hundred dollars. Well, when are you gonna pay me? I don't think ever. <laughs> and so, and so you think that I paid you? I didn't pay you anything. I gave you a bill. You gave yeah. me a bill. I give you one. And so, if I gotta give me a bill for buying a new car, I don't own the car. I I discharged the debt. That's why you don't own anything in America, period. The only way you own something is if you pay for something with a, a lodial title. If you're going to get a title to your home, you need to get a lodial title. If you're going to buy a new car, a motorcycle, or whatever it is you're buying, you need to get a lodial title. It's A-L-L-O-D-I-A-L. A L L O D I A L, a lodial title. A lodial title, you go into the car, you go in to buy a new car, and you say, I want to buy this car, I got the cash. How much is it? $30,000. You say, okay, here it is, $30,000. I want the new car, but I want a lodial title. And they will tell you, oh, a lodial? Yes. Hold on just a minute, we have to go get the lodial paperwork. And then they come out with the paperwork, but it's called a lodial title. A lodial title means you own the car, period. Nobody can touch that car but you. Nobody. The federal government, the United Nations, nobody can touch that car, period. You own it. It's called a lodial title. It's not... The regular kind of title. No, no, it's not, not, it's not the regular title at all. A lodial means you actually own it. That's why the Queen of England, everything she owns, every property she owns is a lodial title to yeah. the Queen of England. She owns everything. A lodial means she owns it. You can't get near it or touch it. That's her, period. She owns it. So she holds other countries in a lodial title. She owns the country, the land. She owns it. And yeah. according to the way European law works, anytime you own a piece of land, you own, you own everything on that land. So if you own the land, a lodial, <clears throat> if you're going to buy a home or buy a new car, you tell the real estate people that you're going to buy the house from. I want to buy the home, yes, but I want to buy it a lodial. And they'll say, well, okay, we have to get a different contract for that. They know what a lodial, uh, they know what a lodial means. They just didn't know you knew. <laughs> yeah, they, yeah, 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 yeah. They didn't know that oh, you wow. knew. <laughs> you yeah. gave just a little bombshell. <laughs> yeah, and they're going to wonder, how did you know about a lodial? Who told you about that? Yeah. Yeah, well, tell him as Jordan Maxwell told me about that. You want to know yeah. who he is? Yeah, go on his website. Yeah, exactly. So, once you understand how business works, mm. and, and I know, I know that it works this way because I've seen it over the years. I've watched people do things, and I have seen it that you can actually. Uh, it's really a, an interesting way the world works. And I've seen people do things in courts and with business that uh, I didn't know was even possible. But I know now how to do things. I don't do, I, I don't do anything. I'm not suggesting anybody do anything. I'm just telling you to educate you. Yeah. Do your own research on what I'm saying. But I'm not suggesting that you do anything. I'm. I think that's my other radio show calling. Okay. So I'm gonna have to go. 
we'll wrap this up. Jordan okay. Maxwell, thank you very much for your priceless knowledge. Thank you. And let's so do much. the show again. We can do the show again. Oh, absolutely. Yes, I will. I will invite you again, no doubt. <laughs> okay, bye-bye. Okay, thank you so much. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Okay, people, this was the Minority of One Report with Jordan Maxwell, a bombshell, as far as I'm concerned. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Humanity has been on an epic journey of discovery, learning the truth about the world we live in. New discoveries about the true origins of humanity, ancient history, free energy, as well as the systematic corruption of world governments are now on the forefront of our daily reality. Is the world headed towards destruction based on control and power? Or is an opportunity now being presented to shift and uplift into a higher consciousness? My name is Mel V, co-founder and creative director of Conscious Consumer Network, an independent broadcast network that was launched on the 1st of January 2015. In the last three years, Conscious Consumer Network has broadcast over 2,800 shows in multiple languages, featuring guests from across the world, whilst creating media that is aimed at the creation of a free, fair, peaceful, just sustainable world. Conscious Consumer Network provides full training and an interactive support network for all broadcasters and we are always looking for inspiring and educational content. Hi, this is Lainey Liberty and this is Miro Siegel. In 2018, Conscious Consumer Network has expanded to multiple broadcast locations, increasing our availability and reach across the world, remaining on the cutting edge of independent media. If we wish to create a better world, we must first create better media, geared towards real education instead of indoctrination. You guys really are what changing the world is going to be about. It's educating kids at a grassroots level. Having become a pillar of stability in the turbulent world of independent media, we have even more going on in 2018. Conscious Consumer Network is a publicly funded network and we rely on all of you to keep us on the air. Show your support for independent media by donating to our 2018 Network Support Fund. Dare to seek a better world. Support independent media.